What's going on, guys? My name is Trey. Welcome to What Kind of Change. Today, we're going to be talking about living a transgender childhood. If you want to like and subscribe after watching this video, please do. You see the donations over there if you want to help us get a PC soundboard. All right, let's go ahead and get right into this video. Uh, I'll start it off by saying this. This video is from 2012, but it does bring up some interesting topics. This is Joey. Joey is a young, young boy who at six years old, um, mom believed that he should be transitioned to a little girl. And that's pretty much all the premise you need. So let's get into it. The problems Joey was having by age three. Temper tantrums, awful. Glass shattering, piercing, yelling, crying fits. What did the doctor say was wrong? Joey's depressed. Let's give him Prozac. Prozac. Yeah. Okay, what else? We needed medication to help Joey sleep. Doctors also prescribe medicine for anxiety, ADHD, and Tourette syndrome. There were right, so right from the jump, I want y'all to hear what they said. Had Tourette's, depression, already going through some subjects here, and now we can see that this is going to trickle into the rest of their life. See, this is the problem I have sometimes when we have to have this discussion, is that, and I'm going to... Let me, let me pause you on a better. I don't want your face like that. We're going to see more and more that this is the stuff that we see behind some people wanting to move forward with transgenderism. Even back in 2012, um, the argument was going on. Is this a mental illness or not? Clearly, something has to be going on for a three-year-old to be struggling with depression. At, at three. And already having to be put on medications that you'll hear right here medications, 17 doses a day. Okay, that sounds insane. It was. My child was broken and there was something really wrong. I just wanted it fixed. But there was something- See, I want y'all to keep that last part in mind. I just wanted it fixed. Okay, that's cool, uh, Allie. I just wanted it fixed. Keep that in mind as we continue on about what the mom does. now. Uh, I'm not going to show the whole thing, but I will explain the parts in between just so you guys, you know, don't get too crazy. I want to say this. What you'll see, what happens next is they have a little sister, right? Joey has a little sister, and Joey starts wearing the little sister's clothes, starts wearing to wear girl clothes, and that's what the mother notices. So around six years old, seven, um, somewhere in that area, around six or seven, you'll see that Joey... Joey was really starting to experience some what they would call gender dysphoria or gender identity disorder is what they call it here. At one point, Joey started breastfeeding one of the dolls. Now, where they learned breastfeeding is where I question some things um, because that's not mentioned here in this documentary. But nonetheless, that's when the mom decided that there's something wrong with the child, that something's going on. The fact that this child is wanting to breastfeed a doll and that starts the whole transition conversation to where Joey eventually starts wearing girl clothes. And that, that pushes up there. All right, let's get to Change it. happened to their child. No more tantrums, no more sleeplessness, no more medication needed. So you remember the medication part earlier. They're saying when Joey transitioned to become Josie, that's when all the medication stopped. And a few months later, they decided to take another leap, send their child to school on the military base in a dress. She's no longer having these fits and no longer screaming and crying. So I thought, the teacher's gonna love this. But that was not what That was all. not the way it went. Parents protested. The family received death threats. Did you think to yourself, you know what? She could have been herself at home and just gone to school at, no, that um, as Joey. Initially, when we first started, then I was like, yeah, that'll work. But then when I let her out, I wasn't going to shove her back in. But was what was happening that later worse? Me. It was worse for me, but not for her. I, I want y'all to keep listening to this stuff. I was going to cut that part out, but I want y'all to keep hearing how the mother constantly, constantly is scared of what would happen if the, she didn't do exactly what her child needed. Allie, I will respond to your, uh, comments, uh, your comments here in a bit. Uh, let me finish this video out. So it's just wild that the more we hear this mother talk, the more you can just hear the mother just pretty much giving up, like not even going to try it. Because when the kid was three, the tantrums were so bad, the mother is so afraid of what will happen. So let's continue uh, forward a little bit here. Now, this is going to be something that's wild. Okay. Like, really, I, I, I want y'all to 
really take a step back, breathe, make sure you're sitting down for what you're about to hear that this child did. Because even when I heard it, it's quite shocking. It is absolutely quite shocking. Can't even believe it was coming. Right. I'll be honest with you when I was watching this whole thing, because this whole thing blew up on X. Um, but I just didn't think it would get this far. So this is where I had to change my stance on what I believe. Right. Not necessarily what I believe, but what I was going to say about this individual. And this is why it's so important, guys. When you see a small clip on X, please take it with a grain of salt. OK, people, you got to understand the people who are posting these things, they may have good intentions. But please, if you really cared, I would say don't comment on a clip unless you got to see the behind the scenes. Not saying you could be perfect. It happens unless you don't need any context. But I think with this individual in this video keeps popping up on X. You need the context because once you hear this part, whew. OK, let's move forward a little bit. This, this is the part that kind of got me. Changing body that she once tried something drastic. Did I tell you that I want to get my own surgery? My own self surgery? She was in the bathroom and she's standing in the shower and she's got her penis in one hand and her nail clippers in another hand. It was like she was building up her determination mm -hmm. to go through with doing it. Mm. Then I ran in literally and grabbed the nail clippers from her hand and squeezed her to me. I could die or bleed to death. See, the, the way that this child said I could have died or bled to death and had a pair of nail clippers ready to chop off their, that would have been gruesome. First of all, I don't, I don't think any kid would be able to handle that pain. Um, but nonetheless, the thing is, this child said I could have died or bled to death. They say it's so nonchalant. So this really pushed me to not think that this kid was necessarily being just coerced into this, that this child was really struggling with having a penis this to me what i would consider a child really struggling with gender dysphoria right and that kind of changed my perspective of, oh it's just a mother being bad now we will talk more about the mother as we get into this but this right here seeing that a child is so nonchalant about saying i want to cut off my penis i could bleed to death but i don't care but the thing that i also i'm gonna show you guys is something that is also strange and it's something I need you guys to take into account because when it comes to a young child, I know people think that they're older adults, and I have to keep reiterating it, but 9 to 10-year-olds are not small adults at all. Not close. They're not just adults in smaller bodies. These kids intellectually have not learned enough, have not experienced enough to understand that the ramifications of the stuff that, that's going to happen to them. They think it's just a game of Mr. Potato Head, that you can just switch out body parts and everything will be okay because they can't put it together. Am I not saying that this kid is somewhat mentally ill? I do believe that. However, I also believe that we cannot be treating these kids and making it seem as if having these surgeries or having these changes, even back in 2012, like this, this documentary is from, even back then, it should have been questionable. All right, let's get back into it. <clears throat> let's move forward a bit because this is, this is the part that I think is so important, and we need to keep this in mind. You hormones and, and doing blockers and all that kind of stuff. Is that something that you want to do? Yes. You do? Tell me why. It's going to make me not have big hands and big feet. Mm -hmm. and get boobs and... You want boobs? <laughs> <laughs> you do? Yeah. That's something most people feel like you ought to wait until really a child is much. You hear that part right there? You hear that part? This kid says... Oh, I'm so apart. I apologize, guys. Let me turn my phone off. Okay. You know what's so important? Is that this kid, and well, let's go back to it, says... Listen to and this. get boobs and you want boobs <laughs> you see how the kid laughs about that <laughs> that showed me that they're still a child still immature right i want you to keep this clip in mind as well i know i'm telling you to keep a lot of clips in mind but keep them in mind because when they mention the word boobs this kid can't even think about it without laughing some of y'all may say that that's joy this kid doesn't have any experience of what it is to have breasts. Once again, it's like a game of Mr. Potato Head. They assume that having breasts makes a woman, but it doesn't because there's many women out there who are flat chested. 
right? Who don't have boobs, as you would say. That doesn't make you any more or any less than a woman. So this child does not have a concept of what it means to be a woman, right? Or a girl. That is the problem with this gender dysphoria in this child. This child just assumes male means no penis, girl. It means vagina, it means boobs. And that is not what makes a woman. That's not what makes a girl. That's what makes you resemble what some girls have. You may resemble the body parts, but you'll never be that. But there's no way you could explain that to a child. How are you going to explain to a child that boobs does not equal girl, right? Keep that part in mind. Uh, let, let's keep, let, let's move forward here. <laughs> you do? Yeah. That's something most people feel like you ought to wait until really a child is much older. Dr. Margaret Moon is a pediatrician and bioethics professor at Johns Hopkins University. She says drugs that delay puberty, blockers, may be helpful in some extreme cases. But that second step, giving opposite sex hormones, is alarming at Josie's age. The changes are irreversible and include rendering the child sterile as an adult. Irreversible, but rendered the child what? Let's hear that again. Dr. Margaret Moon is a pediatrician and bioethics professor at Johns Hopkins University. She says drugs that delay puberty, blockers, may be helpful in some extreme cases. But that second step, giving opposite sex hormones, is alarming at Josie's age. The changes are irreversible and include rendering the child sterile as an adult. Any change That is something that we must keep in mind, okay? Rendering the child sterile. Even back in 2012, they were saying this. Now, what are y'all here today? What do we hear about puberty blockers? What do we hear about taking estrogen? We hear, oh, it's completely irreversible. Even back then, we were telling you guys it wasn't. And today, we're saying the same thing. These make the kids sterile. And there's going to be a part later on in here that I want you guys to pay attention to. That's gonna, we're going to talk about, oh, man, it makes me sick to my stomach even having to think about this clip again. You're going to see how some of these people, it feels like they're puppets. It feels like they're just being told the same thing because the exact same thing we hear today is what's going to be have been heard over 11 years ago so it's telling you that the rhetoric isn't even changing the conversation isn't even changing and that's what makes it so frustrating to have these conversations because it's not like we've been having this conversation yeah you know here and there and this is all brand new what you're going to hear is that the same arguments that were given today were given back then and it's a disgusting argument that they give it is a disgusting argument they give because what they always seem to think is that, or I guess what we all may seem to think is that it always has to be the worst case scenario. And you're going to hear, as you hear the mom talk more and more, she does the same thing, which I think is so bad for the child. The mom is clearly living in fear of thinking that their child is going to harm themselves. And it comes out, you know, it comes out in everyday conversation. And you can see even the kid is starting to feel this because the mom is living, thinking about when the kid was three years old, having all those little tantrums. She is thinking to herself, if I don't do this, this kid is going to go crazy. And that fear in her of not really wanting to deal with it is the problem. Let's move forward a little bit. You'll hear it right here. You'll hear it right here. Is this an overdiagnosis issue? Potentially. It's potentially an overdiagnosis issue. But for Vanessa, there was no debate. She felt certain that not only would female hormones help Josie, but forcing her to go through male puberty could be psychologically devastating. Transgender young people are five times more likely than their peers to attempt suicide. Whenever people ask me, how can I just let her do this? I'd rather have a living transgender daughter than a dead son. Where have you heard that before? I want y'all to listen to this part again. Listen to the mother and how scared she is. Potentially, it's potentially an overdiagnosis issue. But for Vanessa, there was no debate. She felt certain that not only would female hormones help Josie, but forcing her to go through male puberty could be psychologically devastating. Transgender young people are five times more likely than their peers to attempt suicide. Whenever people ask me, how can I just let her do this? I'd rather have a living transgender daughter than a dead son. That is the exact things we have heard today. When we made that video on Chloe, when we made that, uh, uh, the video on, uh, I, I can't remember the names, sorry. 
but there's a couple videos I've made on this same subject in each one of those subjects and even in the articles we read what do we always hear what do we always hear God. whenever people ask me how can I just let her do this I'd rather have a living transgender daughter than a dead son it's like it's like embedded in their head to say that we keep hearing that over and over and over and over and over and over. It's absolutely ridiculous that any chance we get, we're going to hear them say, hey, look, I'd rather have a transgender son than have a dead daughter. I'd rather have a transgender daughter than have a dead son. Who's telling y'all that? Because even though y'all heard that stat that says they're five times more likely to take their lives, even though there's not a lot to prove that. In fact, we can go back and watch one of my videos again where we went over an entire study over, done over 50 years talking about exactly what she said. And the, 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 the rate of which these kids were taking their lives was less, less than those of people who were regularly taking their lives anyway saying that people who were transgender right you take somebody who's transgender and not take somebody who's non-transgender right the person who was non-transgender was still uh more likely to take their life when they got older because here's the thing it's not about being transgender it's what comes with being transgender they're saying is if if you want to be a boy or girl that is going to determine if you're going to take your life or not that's not what it is the things that t make people take their lives normally come from depression anxiety and just dealing with life and not being able to deal with it in a healthy way. That's what normally leads people to take in their lives. It's not being transgender or not. It's about what leads to that. The depression. We already heard this child has been dealing with depression since they were three. Got off medication when they transitioned to a girl. But I'm going to be honest with you. And I'm just going to go a little bit in the future. I obviously looked into this individual and what they're doing today. In 2022, this individual, the little the little girl we're seeing here, which is really a boy, I looked into what they're doing today. They are still struggling, still struggling to um, even to put up pictures of themselves. They still struggle today. This this is ten this is ten years later in 2022, which will be ten years from this documentary. This person still struggles to look themselves in the mirror. Not too long ago, they were doing a live stream where they were drinking. It's just like. You can't tell me that that's a person who's just extremely happy because even when I watch the live stream, when I, even when I listen, it's the same rhetoric. It's been 11 years since this day and this child still struggles to even put up pictures. They still struggle to look in the mirror. That's my point. Y'all think y'all can just fix this. We can't just fix this with simply cutting off body parts. It's just not that simple. Because if you have to go to such an extreme, if I have to go to such an extreme of chopping off my leg to feel right, there's a problem. But I don't feel like we deal with that. And I understand, like I said, this mom is scared. She has no idea what she's doing. Okay, I get that. And this was maybe a little bit newer than normal. But even then, because really transgender, we made a video, 1999, we were having this discussion, but people didn't want to listen then. Obviously, I was too young, but I'm talking about other people. But... I'm just saying, like, this mom is so scared of what their child is going to do. They're getting fed all these, oh, they're going to take their life. Oh, they're going to do this. Oh, they're going to go crazy. Who knows what they're going to do? That this mom doesn't know what to do. I bet she's scared for her, maybe even for her life. I don't know. But you can tell that this mom is just scared out of her mind. Let's continue. And I can understand. When you see a three-year-old who's pretty much manic, and you want to do anything in the world to never have to go through that again, I get that. I absolutely get that. Okay, let's move forward a little bit. Here's the part that throws me off. Again, listen to the kid. Listen to the kid. It seems like puberty, the idea of impending puberty is a little scary to you. I just want to get done. Do you just want it to get done? Yeah. What does that mean? Like, I don't want to get surgery right now. Mm. You can. Let's say you could wake up and have She's, whatever. By the way, this young, keep saying she because... Obviously, after you watch this so many times, you keep hearing that pronoun. But this is Joey. But nonetheless, this this kid. What leads us up to this point is that they're talking about having puberty blockers and they're having a discussion. Should it happen? Should it not happen? And that's why this conversation starts right here. And that's why she's like, you have the surgery. 
Do you just want it to get done? Yeah. Not the okay. surgery, but the blockers. Wait, okay, well, I don't want to get surgery right now. Mm. You can. Let's say you could wake up and have whatever you wanted on your body. You No penis. You want a vagina, breasts, all that <laughs> stuff. I made you giggle. But oh, man. I've watched that part so many times, and it still makes me sick to my stomach. I made you giggle about having your genitals removed as a child. I made you giggle. That's funny. That's how you let you know that this child is not prepared to even get close to making a decision that would make this individual sterile for the rest of their life. All that <laughs> stuff. I made you giggle. Would that be... They hear the word penis and vagina and laugh. It's the same thing. You know, it's just like, obviously, clearly to the child who can't even have the discussion without laughing. Right? Right? And I know, once again, this may be some kids, you know, some people saying, this is joy. That's my... One, it's, again, that's one of my problems. This is not a game of Mr. Potato Head. This kid should be taking this far more seriously, but she can't. Because this kid, I'm sorry, once again, I keep going between she and he, and it's just, I hate playing the game. It's so confusing. Uh, but nonetheless, because I've watched it so many times, and they never showed Joey as a boy, the whole thing they're saying is this is a girl, so it's hard for me not to, my brain just does what it naturally does. So let's go back to it. This kid is laughing about vagina. This kid is laughing about having boobs. This kid is laughing about having their genitals removed. You saw the, the reaction. He said, when he, I want to have surgery. This, keep in mind, at this point in this video, this kid is nine. And you see, you see them go, um, I want to have surgery, but I can't. I mean, like, what the? F it's like, really? You're talking about having surgery at nine? But you could tell that this kid is also talking a lot with their parents because you could, here's something you guys may or may not know. But sometimes when somebody goes, man, that kid is well spoken. Most of the time, the reason some kids speak better than others, and this can be scientifically proven, um, scientifically, but what am I talking about? Statistically, this is proven that kids who grow up, let's say today, this is back then. But let's say we take kids today. If you take a child right now, if from the time they're born to the time they get to like nine or 10, let's say they grow up on a tablet. They grow up watching YouTube videos. They grow up playing video games all the time. They don't really have any interaction with the parents. Most of the time, the parents hand them some kind of device and the kid gets on that and they go to school. They come home. Those kids tend to be socially more awkward than kids who are having conversation with their parents. And what I, reason I bring that up is you can tell that this child talks to the mother for the fact that this kid said, I want to have surgery, but I can't. The only way they could really understand that concept of having surgery or even think, have that kind of attitude towards it is that they're talking more than likely to the mom about this, about constantly having this surgery, constantly changing their body. And this is going to be obviously proven later in the video. You're going to know for a fact that these two are having this conversation all the time. And that's the problem, right? The kid is going to resemble what the mom says. You'll see that later in the video. But just know that when you hear a kid that's this mature and talking, you can tell that the parents are having sometimes too deep a conversation with the child. Yes. Yeah. Let me move forward here. Oh, by the way, they come back later on and say the Josie's too young to have the puberty blockers because they're not going through puberty. So the kid ends up crying. I'm not going to show that part, but the kid ends up crying, being very upset that they can't change. So we're moving forward about a year now, and the kid is now around... 10 years old and that brings us to the thing you guys have probably been seeing on x this is the clip that's been going around so let's get to this part an unexpected conversation happened one afternoon but on the inside where nobody else can see yeah are you a boy or are you a girl maybe i'm a boy inside and a girl outside really yeah is that true only you know the answer to that. See, so see right if, there, right there. That was your opportunity, Mom. You said only you know the answer. No, you know the answer. You're the adult. You wanted to grow up to be a man? Yeah. Would you tell me? Mm, yeah. Hey, if you wanted to grow Keep up and be- Keep in mind, this kid is 10. A man, you could. I want to be- Sometimes I think I'm boy, sort of, but I want to be a girl. Yeah. Would you love me if I'm a boy? Of course. I would love you no matter what. I always have, and I always will. It was the first time Vanessa ever heard Josie sound uncertain. 
I this feel- conversation that's about that. This, you know what's hard for me too is looking into this kid. I know a kid that I work with who looks exactly like Joey, right? Exactly like Joey, right? Even though Joey right now is because of the hair and everything looks more feminine, but I know a kid that has the same color eyes. It's almost like looking this kid in the eye, and it's hard to watch this sometimes because it's like, man, this kid is clearly confused, and the mom is too. And it's a terrible dynamic. You have a mother who is so scared of their kid going back to when they were throwing tantrum and think that the kid is going to take their life. And the kid just wants some confirmation from the mom who's not going to give it to him because the mom can't even come up with a decision to be like, look, my, I am the mother. I'm going to say this. Instead, this mother is talking to this 10 year old like they're best friends. You're going to hear this part, and it's quite shocking to me. To and This is the kind of stuff we need to see, because these are the kind of conversations that really happen. I'm not here to kill the mother, because it's been 11 years since this day. I'm not take, don't, I hope these people don't take this stuff personal, because I'm not personally attacking the mom. I don't know who that is. I am attacking the subject, but the mom is the subject. I'm just attacking the ideas and the concept of what happened to this child. So that's all that's happening here. But I'm just saying that I get to take another look into what parents feel. And that's why it's always important to also try to watch or try to look into these people's lives instead of always trying to be like, oh, I just want to be hateful. And I hate these people who are going through this with the kids. And I hate all these individuals. You need to look at the humanity in there. As much as people were getting on X and saying this mother's terrible, she should be in prison. I get it. I get it. I get it. But also... You need to take the time to see the humanity in it. Because once again, I'll say this, trans kids, trans parents, uh, parents of trans kids, I don't want to make them out to be monsters. I want to make them out to be humans who made mistakes. I can't bring myself to just be like, I hate these people. Do I think sometimes parents can be manipulative? Yes. But do I also think the parents can get manipulated themselves into thinking they're doing the right thing? Absolutely. And that's what I want you to see. So don't look at this through a hateful lens. Look at it through somebody who's making the wrong decision and see how you can prevent it or how you can talk to parents who are going through such a thing. Because if you just walk into this with hate, it's not going to work. It's the same thing we see on the other side. It's like when you try to have a conversation with these kind of people who do agree with it, they send it. They tend to yell. They tend to spew. They tend to spit in your face. And that doesn't get us anywhere. Let's sit down and have the conversations and really see the humanity in all of this, because that's so important, especially now that it's trickling down to the kids. I care just about about just about I care just as much about people who are dealing with gender dysphoria or people who think they should be trans because they want to have breasts or whatever, whatever's going on with their some of that's being fueled by the porn industry. Some of that's being fueled from manipulation from the social media. I want to have these conversations with these people. Will we come out agreeing with each other? Probably not, but that's not the point. The point is to have the conversation so when people do go through this stuff and parents do go through this stuff, they will at least have both sides. We shouldn't be just yelling and spitting at each other because that's foolish. I feel like maybe there's a part of you that's afraid to tell me what you really want. What if I said, oh, please don't be a girl? Well, I guess I'll be... A boy? Um, no, honey. You see the confusion already? I need to listen to you and my mom. Well, yeah, you need to listen to me about, you know, what's healthy to eat, and you need to listen to me about what time to go to bed. But you, you are the one. I have to listen to you. Yeah, well, if you... Not in this particular situation. Said I need to be a boy. Maybe no. I have to. No. For her to have any indecision now, I don't know what it's rooted in, and I really need to find that out. I feel like I'm about to cry. I'm just kind of surprised by some of these answers today. It's the first time you've given them to me. Everything I thought I knew is kind of in question. Had Vanessa's wholehearted, unwavering support of Josie's transition actually pushed her child too far, too fast? The thought of her having made such a huge decision in her life all based on what she thought I wanted that would be that would be traumatic for me bioethics that's the point you're making the kid is making decisions probably based off what you want because the kid is really confused clearly to the point where they wanted to harm themselves 
You cannot just have this unwavering support when it comes to this. I don't understand why parents can have an unwavering support or unwavering um, be totally against something. But when it only when it comes to being transgender, do they have to be completely supportive? If it was getting into drugs, if it was drinking, if it was wanting to take their life, if it was anything else, they would be like, oh, no, I can't support that. But if it comes to one of the most life altering decisions a child could ever make. This is the route you want to go. This is you want to have unwavering support this way. And like I said, I don't think every parent is evil. I think a lot of these parents are just like, bro, I don't know what to do. Like my kids coming to me and saying, I want, they want to be this. They want to be that. I don't know. And I don't want my kids to take their life. And I'm having these people over here telling me if I don't do it, I'm this, I'm that, I'm disgusting. And then I have the other people on this side saying, if I do do it, I'm disgusting. That's what it is to be a parent in a situation. Cause you have both sides pretty much telling you the most awful things. You got people on this side who are on my side, right? Who are going to be going to the extreme, not trying to understand the parents saying, if you give your kid, your kid puberty blockers, you're evil, you're disgusting, you should rot in the deepest part of you know where. Something I would never say. But then you got people on the other side saying, if you don't transition your child, you deserve to die and you make me despicable. Go do th this disgusting stuff to yourself. So you got both of these sides and the parent is like, I, I just want to be there for my kid. I just, I don't know what I'm supposed to do. We need groups for these type of people. We need groups to have these real conversations. I still don't think we should do anything to the kids till they're 18. And I know what you people are saying to me, but what if the kid takes their life? Let's have the discussion. What if that child takes their life? I get that. What do you want me to say? There's nothing I can say. If the kid takes their life, it was still the right decision not to make them go through the transition at 18. It's still right because you know what? I've kids take their lives, man. They do. I've had, we've had, I'm sure you've had somebody in your high school or junior high who took their life. I've had people in my junior high and high school take their life when we were kids. When we were kids. And it wasn't even being transgender. It was over this. It was over that. We could, and we had, we sat down, had a billion discussions about what we could have did right, what we did wrong, what could we have done. To, my cousin took his life. My cousin was a young man. And this has been what, my cousin took his life back in what, 2011, 2012? Around the same time that this kid did. My cousin took his life. We could sit all day and talk about what we could have done, what we couldn't have done. But what we can't do is always base every decision fear based of if they're going to take their life or not. Because what I can tell you, man, is that when some of these people I'm known to take their lives, I'm sure you had, it, it was coming down the pipeline and it just seems like there's only so much you can do. It's impossible to, for somebody who's dealing with such trauma or dealing with that kind of ideology. Because only we can only talk from a place that we haven't done it, right? And it's so hard to be like, well, I mean, you should have done this. It's like, I could have done that, and it still would have resulted in the same ending. I told you that this person, I've seen them now, 11 years later, they are still struggling mentally. They are still struggling mentally with this, all this stuff going on. So what difference did it make? You went through all the transition and you went through all the stuff. You went through the puberty blockers and the person is still struggling every day to even look themselves in the mirror. That's my point is we don't know if that outcome happens and the kid takes his life. That's an awful scenario. But that doesn't mean that if you went through with the transition and removed the body parts that this kid was going to be happy. This kid could have still struggled. It's still at the very end of all of it took their life. So we can't assume the worst scenario. All we can do is get through as much as we can until if this kid wants to do that at 18, there's nothing we can do. It'd be, you know, there's nothing we can do to stop it. But all we can do as parents is try to do the best for our kids, what we think is right. But we cannot live at this point and going, well, I guess I, if I don't do it, they're going to take their life. No, you cannot just dream of the worst possible scenario. You can't do it. I know the pain, the crying is hard. But to me, you cannot do this. Let's put, I want to bring y'all to this last part that also made my stomach turn. I find concerning. A decision is being made whether or not 
Josie will have children, her own biological children in the future. That's why the role of blockers is so important. They get an opportunity for two years, three years to really work with a mental health therapist on what it's going to mean to be transgender. But that could still put you at age 12. To me, it seems ridiculous to have a, a kid at age 12, 13, 14 deciding whether they want to have biological children when they're 20, 30, or 40. I mean... Well, they make the decision to kill themselves at 12 and 13. That's a pretty powerful decision. They don't know, though. That's the point. That's what makes my stomach turn. That's, that, you're only proving the point. You're saying that they take their lives at 12 and 13, and that's a pretty big decision. Exactly the point. The kids don't understand the ramification of taking their lives at 12. They don't get it. If a kid takes their life at 12, clearly they don't understand the ramifications of that. Because think about what they're taking their life over. This kid has a happy family life for the most part. If this kid was to take their life at 12 because they couldn't have boobs, don't you think that's crazy? Don't you think there's a problem? Don't you think they don't quite understand it? The fact that they wanted to take their lives because they couldn't have boobs? Something that this kid was giggling about earlier in the video. This kid heard the word boobs and laughed. Heard the whoop. They, they thought about having their penis removed, and they didn't say, oh, man, I don't. No. You know what they did? They laughed. They giggled. The kid clearly doesn't understand. You're only proving the point. That if a child makes the decision to take their life at 11, they clearly do not, cannot handle just the small pressures of life. Okay, now obviously there's some extreme situations that we don't need to go over because that, that's not the point. We, we don't need to go over the extremes. Okay, we're going over somebody who's going through something like this because clearly we can go into abuse and stuff like that. But even then, even then, a kid taking their life at 11 or 12 would only prove the point that that is such a life-altering decision that they cannot comprehend. Because you know why I know that? Because when an adult takes their life, if a kid, if somebody took their life at 25 years old, what would we think? Man, that was quite young to take their life. I wish they only knew. And somebody took their life at 35. We still said, man, 35? That's, that's young. I mean, if they only knew they could think about that. Bray, Bray Wyatt, who just passed away at 36. What is everybody saying about him? Man, he was so young. That's the point. If we're saying that somebody died at 35 or 36 and say, man, that was a young way to go. What do we think about somebody who's 11 or 12? If we're saying somebody at 36, is, that's a young time to die. Do you think at 11, it? You know what I'm saying? If somebody wants to, and not saying Bray Wyatt did it, it was a completely different situation. But I'm talking about if somebody takes their life at 30, we're going to say, man, that was a person too young to die, man. Too young. If somebody takes their life at 40, we'll be like, man, what was, what was, what was going on? You know? That's crazy to take your life. No matter when somebody takes their life, it never even get, crosses our mind to be like, justifiable. You know? It really goes to us to be like, man, I must have been going through a lot. It must have been tough. But the younger you get, starting at 35 and going down, we're going to start saying, man, I, I wish they just knew they could have got through it. But you're going to say 11, 12, 13-year-old, 14-year-old taking their life meant that they completely understood what they were doing? That they, they completely understood that taking their life at 11, however they go about it, they completely understood what they were doing. That is just, that to me, that is a foolish argument to even have. And it's once the thing, it's again when we go to, I'd rather have a trans daughter than a dead son. You people don't get it. You just don't get it. Making a decision like that, even if it happens at 11, does not mean that you should have transitioned a child. If a child takes their life at 11 years old, they're going, their brain is going through that much. They're, they're not processing that much. You transitioning that child and giving them some irreversible damage to their body is not what you do. That's just not what you do. Because even you'll hear from these parents, they're like, I don't know what's going to happen. I just, you know, exactly. You don't know what's going to happen. They could have the surgery and still want to take their life. That's the problem. Depression, depression, dealing with mental illnesses, especially suicidal thoughts, that's deep. It really is deep, but a child 
is not going to be able to comprehend taking their life at 14 and thinking, oh, man, it's all honky-dory. It's just not. I know when it comes to death and it comes to losing people, it's hard. When my... When my son passed away, you don't think I sat with myself every single day thinking what I could have done different, what my wife could have done different, what the doctors told us we could have did different. My son's gone. He's going to be gone. He's never coming back. But to say I could have did this, I could have did that, I could have done all these things, is not going to bring my son back. It's hard to deal with the uh, death of a child. I get that. Trust me, I get it. But you cannot live your life as a parent questioning every single second of your day, living in complete fear that if you don't do everything your child asks of you, that it's going to prevent it. Because you are the parent. Until the kid moves on and moves out. You have to continue to love on them and do the best you can. But if you live in fear every single day, it will destroy that child. You heard the child in this documentary. Please go watch it if you like to. It's just called Living as a Transgender Child. Living a Transgender Childhood. Go watch it. Just type it into YouTube. It's an old documentary, or you can go watch it on CNN if you want to. But nonetheless, there's no easy way to be a parent. And that's why I'm not killing the mother. I think she made the wrong decision, but she was scared out of her mind, and she was getting told that the son was going to die if they did not transition. And that's what you see happening to a lot of these parents. Nobody wants to hold their child in their arms. Lifeless, I get that. But that fear will come off onto the child if you let it. The kid is going to start thinking to themselves. Instead of you thinking about happiness and be like, man, what your life could be like as a boy, you could be happy playing around, having so much fun, and it'll be all okay. I understand you're struggling with this, but even as a boy, you can still be happy. Will it work? Maybe. Maybe not. But everybody assumes it won't. But you could be like, hey, oh, you want to go play over there? Oh, yeah. Oh, I see. Man, you're, you're, you're growing up into a strong young man. I look at you. Beautiful. Your love. But if I go to my child and be like, and every time they hear me having a conversation with my husband or having a conversation with my wife or having a conversation with whoever, every time they hear me having a discussion and I'm always like, yeah, little, little, little Jimmy, I knew that if I didn't, uh, let them be a girl. They were going to take their life or they're going to be sad and depressed. The kid is going to start taking that kind of stuff on. They're going to start thinking to themselves, you're right. And if I, if I don't become a, uh, a girl, I, I'm going to be sad. Instead of hearing, I think Jimmy could just be just as happy as a boy and understanding that that's how God made them. And they can still use, live a great, full, fulfilling life. It doesn't always have to be one or the other. They can still live this beautiful life as a boy. Right? But if you make it seem like being a boy is going to destroy them, or if they decide not to transition, they'll be sad and depressed and want to take their life. <sighs> okay. Let me know what you guys think. I know this was a long video, but I always like to have these discussions because I know they're hard, especially when it comes to losing a child. I get that. I understand the pain that comes with that. Um, no matter the age, losing a child, even if you lose your child, when they're grown and an adult, my mentor, he lost his son when he was 18. His son just me and his me and him are the same age. My mentor's son is the same age as me would have been. And they took their life at 18. You don't think that hurt him just as much if he had lost a child at five? Losing your child at any age sucks. And that's that's not even close to what it feels like. But. You know, and I never thought I'd be the guy sitting here 
who knows the feeling of holding my holding my son in my arms and watch the you know light fade away knowing that it's, it's all over that's hard that's hard and I hate thinking about it but I do deal with it you know and all I'm saying is that I'm not trying to kill these parents I'm not trying to get into that all I'm saying is that just love them just love them until they get out the house or they decide to make those own decisions and you keep loving them past that obviously but being a parent is hard so anyway guys let me know what y'all think I'm gone